Um, it's going to break up into about three parts. I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about Asian giant hornets, background, biology, a little bit about their life cycle to help you understand why this invasive species is a threat to Washington and why the WSDA is doing. After that, I'll talk about what the WSDA did next year and what we plan for this year. And then at the very end, um, what's a better pest management practice than going over insects that may resemble Asian giant hornet and discussing the differences. So Vespa mandarinia sometimes gets another name like yak killer hornet, giant sparrow bee, and I'm sure you've all heard the infamous murder hornet. When you're Googling it, talking about it, I ask you to use its name, Asian giant hornet. You'll find the best resources and information when you Google this term. Um, the murder hornet just was a term that became sensationalized through the media. What happened is when Asian giant hornets were discovered, an article was published, Asian giant hornets threatened honeybees in the Pacific Northwest by the New York Times last year. It gained a little bit of ground, so they did a follow-up article with that infamous name murder hornet. Really no rhyme or reason how that came about. It was a new term to the scientific community um, over here. Uh, just a researcher overseas gave them that word and they kind of ran with it. So just use Asian giant hornet. You'll get the best information. What are they? They are the largest hornet in the world. Adults range between an inch and a half to two inches in length. They're native to Asia, most observed in the areas of Japan and Korea. They like subtropic to moderate temperatures, hence their attempt to establish in Washington state. And you can tell Asian giant hornets apart from other insects because they have a very prominent large orange yellow head. Um, it's about as big as wide as its body and then they have the dis those distinct orange yellow bands on their abdomen. I always hear people argue it's definitely orange or it's definitely yellow. I like to think about a school bus. I think a school bus is yellow but if I'm shown a paint, paint swatch I might lean more towards orange. So I'm not always going to tell you it's orange yellow. When were Asian giant hornets discovered? In December 8th of 2019 a resident of Blaine found a deceased Asian giant hornet outside. He snapped a picture, sent it to the Washington Invasive Species Council. They turned it over to the WSDA and we confirmed it to be Asian giant hornet. Just like any invasive species, we don't really want them here. Um, anytime an invasive species comes over, it has the potential, potential to destroy habitat, to destroy a niche, take away a food source, um, and then we might lose some of our native beneficial species. The threats Asian giant hornet poses here in Washington are specifically towards honeybees, human health, and agriculture. Um, throughout this PowerPoint, I'll explain those threats in more detail, and at the end, I'll go over some of these native species. But they're in Washington, so what's the potential for Asian giant hornets to spread throughout the rest of the United States? Washington State University Extension, along with some researchers, including Chris Looney from our entomologist lab, did a climatic study. Now they did this for more than the, just the United States, but that's what I'm gonna show you here. What they did is they looked at climate factors. So just like weather patterns, they didn't really look at food sources um, and different, different types of habitat, just kind of the climate and the weather, weather. And then we got this map. So the red to yellow areas are areas where Asian giant hornet um, has the potential to live and spread themselves. As you look across the west coast to the east coast, you see a blue to purple portion across the Midwest of the United States. That's based on global habitat. It's not very suitable for Asian giant hornets to live and spread themselves. And then as you get closer to the east coast, you see that habitat improving again. So based off this, you know, the Pacific Northwest Good spot for Asian giant hornets, Midwest, not really. And then as you move east, it gets better. So we, Asian giant hornets, not likely to spread themselves across the United States. But as we know with any invasive species, they're really good hitchhikers. So Asian giant hornet does have the potential, it can have the potential to hitchhike from its native range over to Washington. So we need to be really careful with this species and any other invasive species that we're not doing the transport for them. All right. Now I'm gonna get into kind of the biology and background about Asian giant hornets. A couple things I want you to take away is a little bit about their nest and their life cycle. This will help improve your safety as well as help you understand um, why the WSDA does what we do during certain times of the year and how you as citizens can help. So Asian giant hornet, typically non-aggressive, but if they feel threatened, they can sting. If you come upon this hornet's home, which is typically a colony nested in the ground, you have your potential to get stung increases and you might even get swarmed. 
So Asian giant hornet's nests are actually a little different than what you might think. They're not typically hanging from a tree. Asian giant hornets actually typically nest in the ground. They'll burrow at the base of pine trees or take over an old animal or an old rodent burrow. And these nests can be over two feet wide and they will produce hundreds of adult hornets. Um, Nests can be recorded above ground in hollow trees, like the one that was eradicated in Washington, but typically in their native range, um, they are underground. I have a video here for you of a lone Asian giant hornet hovering above a nest. So in September 2019, in Nanaimo, British Columbia, a nest was found right outside a forest path in a park um, where people had been walking and they were able to remove and eradicate this nest. Following that, no more reports of Asian giant hornet from the Nanaimo area have been confirmed. So why haven't those report, why hasn't there been any other reports? If Asian giant hornets were there, why aren't they there anymore? Well, it has a little bit possibly to do with the life cycle and trapping efforts. So I will spend a minute on this graphic. I'm gonna start at the top and go in a clockwise position. In the winter, the old queen that started the nest and all the workers and the males she produced will die. They're deceased and dead. The only thing that makes it through the winter potentially are new queens. What they'll do is they will find a sheltered spot um, or a spot in the soil and cover themselves up in overwinter. Moving out of the winter into the spring, the queens will emerge and they'll find a place to build that underground nest. Leaving the spring, heading into the summer, throughout the summer, you'll see workers out flying around. They'll be foraging, finding food sources, bringing it back to the colony to feed themselves. However, as the summer ends and the fall nears, that colony will reach its maturity, which means that queen is going to stop laying workers and that queen's going to start laying new virgin queens and males. Because during that fall time, those new virgin queens and males are being laid, there's a potential in their diet for potential need in their diet for more protein. And what's a better source of protein in their native range than entire honeybee colonies? So this is a um, time that fall time because the new queens and males are being laid, they need the protein. This is when honeybees become more of a danger to Asian giant hornet predations. All right, so back it up. The new queens and the males are being laid. Following that, they're gonna leave the nest and mate very close to the nest. Not all queens will successfully mate. However, the queens will fly off to overwinter and then the males and the workers will die again. That cycle will repeat itself. One thing that makes it a little hard in tracking Asian giant hornets is the dispersal distance of the, those queens is unknown. Um, it's not really no, researched how far Asian giant hornet queens will fly once they mate or if after they overwinter, they'll fly off again. Um, we do know that some native species can fly up to 18 miles, however, or some related species. So what does that mean for those honeybees during that fall time? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how that happens. What we'll start off with is an Asian giant hornet will just kind of start hunting around a honeybee hive, um, maybe grabbing an adult honeybee as they leave the hive, cornering on a leaf, catching it on the ground, and then it'll mash it up into a bee ball, take it back to the colony to feed the young. If they decide this is a great source of protein and we want to go after it, the Asian giant hornet will mark the honeybee hive with a pheromone. This will signal the other Asian giant hornets to come to the hive. Once they're there, they'll enter the hive and begin what we've heard called the infamous slaughter phase. Um, it's called the slaughter phase because the Asian giant hornets will actually grab the adult honeybees, decapitate their heads, and just drop their bodies to the ground. Once the adult honeybees are taken care of, they'll actually start occupying the hive. I'm um, seeing it as their own. When they're occupying the hive, they're going to be taking the brood and the pupae, um, the larvae, back to their colony to feed their young. They're going to harvest the brood and occupy the hive until the pupae and larvae is either no longer viable um, or they don't need that food source anymore. Since they're occupying this hive, defending it as their own, if a beekeeper were to come upon this while it, the, this was happening, their potential for being stung is there and normal beekeeping attire doesn't keep you safe from the sting of an Asian giant hornet. Again, this, this behavior is more, most common in the fall, so that's when honeybees are most susceptible. All right, so what's up with the honeybees in their native range then? How do they still have honeybees if Asian giant hornets tend to des can decimate an entire hive? Well, there's a couple differences. 
Um, we have European honeybees over here. And in their native range, they have Japanese honeybees. So they're, you know, different species. Um, Japanese honeybees aren't the greatest produce producers of honey. And Japanese honeybees have this mite that they carry with them. So we don't want to bring them here. But Japanese honeybees do have a defense mechanism. If an Asian giant hornet attempts to enter the hive, the honeybees will meet the Asian giant hornet. And they'll kind of create a bee ball around the Asian giant hornet swarming it. They'll begin to buzz and warm their bodies to enough of a threshold, just enough that the honeybees will stay alive, but the Asian giant hornet will essentially be cooked alive and die. So that way they can protect their hive before Asian giant hornets are able to enter the hive and decimate it. Um, the European honeybees, they don't have that defense mechanism. So Asian giant hornets could threaten and harm honeybees much more here. Um, I'm going to have to pause really quick and move my dogs. Come on, out, go, 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 go. Oh, Cassie, you're muted. All right, Wait. I'm back. Thank you. They thought it was playtime and it's not quite playtime yet. <laughs> okay, so um, why would they have Asian giant hornets there if they're so threatening and deadly here? What's another reason? All right, maybe I'll go get to go to the next slide. Okay, so Asian giant hornets could potentially be a great source of protein. You know, when food sources weren't that easy to find or easy to get to, the pupae and the larvae, as well as the adult Asian giant hornets, you know, are a great snack and um, can help fuel people's diets. That has translated a little bit differently today. The pupae and the larvae has actually became a delicacy. Um, it equates to maybe like $31 a pound. Um, people will do the risky business of removing the hive to gather the pupae and the larvae, um, season it up, fry it up, have a feast. So it's, it's something special. Um, a couple other things that happen is, you know, eating adult Asian giant hornets, um, putting them as a novelty in energy drinks, kind of like we've heard with the tequila and the worm, the, al the hornet and the alcohol as well. Um, so that's kind of about the, that's kind of the background of the Asian giant hornet, a little bit about it in its native range. And I want to talk to you about what the WAC is doing and what we did. So the Asian giant hornet was reported by the public, right? The first one. So we decided it's going to be very crucial to have the public continue to report and have the public help us detect this. The other thing that we had to do was we had to set up a kind of a communications plan. Um, there's multiple sites. There's the communications, there's the survey and the trapping, and then there's working with citizen scientists, cooperators, and beekeepers. So communications decided, you know, there's going to be sometimes things go on the news that's going to be incorrect. And as part of this, we want to give people the most accurate information. So that's part of it. The other thing we want to do is encourage citizen scientists trapping and encourage people to report. Um, just a funny meme for you here, murder hornets arrived in America everybody. That's another one for apocalypse bingo. You know, during that 2020 year, a lot of crazy things happened, um, as well as the term murder hornet coming. So we encouraged citizens to report, and they did. Citizens across the state of Washington reported potential sightings of Asian giant hornet. This map I have for you here on the left is a map of the state of Washington. All of the orange circles or dots are unconfirmed sightings of Asian giant hornet. People have either submitted a report with a photo that's not Asian giant hornet or submitted a report that didn't quite have enough details to confirm or deny it was Asian giant hornet. So how many Asian giant hornets were found? Last year in 2020, 31 Asian giant hornets were found. If you look at the middle zoom in of the map that's surrounded in blue, that's the area of Whatcom County, specifically Blaine and Bellingham. Those were the only reports confirmed of Asian giant hornet in the state of Washington was in that Whatcom County. 15 of those reports came from the public. So again, the public is very crucial in helping detect any invasive species, especially preventing the spread of Asian giant hornet. I usually get asked about British Columbia. Um, they did have six total sightings. Um, like I said, none were in that Nanaimo area, but between 2019 and 2020, um, from the White Rock to Alder Grove area. So White White Rock's kind of to the northwest of Lane, and Alder Grove is kind of to the maybe northeast of Linden, if you're familiar with um, Whatcom County. So what did we do once we had one of these red dots or one of those confirmed sightings? We created what we called response grids. 
So these are two maps of the Blaine, Birch Bay, Custer area, and the bottom left picture is Bellingham. What I'm going to tell you to do is look at one of those purple circles and imagine the very center of it. That was where an Asian giant hornet had been confirmed and detected. From that, we created two, four, and mainly an eight kilometer grid out from it, an eight kilometer circumference in every direction. Um, that would tell us how, where, how many traps to place and where. We went eight kilometers because that's the typical foraging distance of an Asian giant hornet, meaning how likely they are to fly to food before returning for their nests. So we went eight kilometers out from every time we found an Asian giant hornet and trapped there. But it wasn't the WSDA trapping. The WSDA deployed over 900 traps last year, but citizen scientists are the ones who really killed it. Cooperators really helped. We asked the public to you know, take their own time and their resources and their efforts to help us. And they responded immensely deploying and registering over 1500 traps in the state of Washington. It really is a joint effort between the WSCA and citizens of Washington to prevent this species from establishing. So we made these traps, these two liter 64 ounce clear plastic bottle traps. We filled them up with rice cooking wine and orange juice hung them up six to nine feet in a tree, hoping that scent of that bait would lure and attract the Asian giant hornet. The Asian giant hornet would fly in the trap, not be able to get out, drown in that rice cooking wine and die, and we would have a detection of an Asian giant hornet. That Asian giant hornet would drown and die, it would be dead. We wanna capture a live Asian giant hornet like this. So once a dead Asian giant hornet was found, we deployed a bunch of more traps around that trap it was caught in, um, and these were live traps. So the Asian giant hornet could fly in, it wouldn't be able to fly in out, but there was something protecting it from drowning in that rice cooking wine and dying. Once we had that Asian giant hornet collected, the next thing we needed to do was track it back to its nest. With eradicating Asian giant hornets, the goal is actually to remove the nest. While finding any sighting and confirming any detection of Asian giant hornet and removing any gi Asian giant hornet from the population is great. You think back to that life cycle. If we can remove that entire nest before new queens and males are able to produce and mate and fly off, then we're removing Asian giant hornets from potentially making a new nest next year in the next population. So we wanna remove that entire nest to remove that population. What we did was we had a couple failures tracking first. Um, applying a tracker to an Asian giant hornet wasn't the easiest. Um, we ended up trying it with glue, and then we ended up trying it, tying it with dental floss. Um, the first time we tracked, we used Bluetooth technology, and then eventually we had to upgrade to using, not really upgrade, but switch over to using telemetry. So essentially what it looked like is we were carrying around big old cable TV antennas, you know, the ones you used to have on the top of the house. We would have one of those antennas in our hand, some headphones in, and if we were pointing in the correct direction of that tracker that was on the Asian giant hornet, you would hear a feedback or a click or a noise. As you got closer to that tag, the feedback would become louder and stronger. So you're trampling through the forest, you're trampling through Himalayan blackberry bushes and trees trying to find this nest. This is actually probably the most dangerous part of trying to locate and eradicate Asian giant hornets um, because I remember I said the nest is typically in the ground so it might be harder to see until you stumble upon it. So the other thing we have and we had equipped with us was a flare transmitter. That's the bottom right um, picture. Basically it's a camera that you can point at the ground or at a tree and if there's a heat source or anomaly behind it it'll light up on the screen. We use that ground flare to help us um, detect this first Asian giant hornet nest in the United States. The first thing we saw was we heard Asian giant hornets. We knew that the tracker had taken us close to the nest and we were looking around. You could hear an Asian giant hornet buzz overhead and then we were using visuals to find it. Once we had thought we had found the site of the Asian giant hornet nest, we took that ground flare and pointed it at the tree. We did this to help determine if the Asian giant hornet nest was completely inside that tree cavity or if perhaps they had dug themselves a little bit underground. Following finding the nest we eradicated, our plans had planned for us to eradicate an Asian giant hornet nest in the ground. We had practiced at night, practiced removing an entire fake nest from the ground. Um, however, that nest was in the tree, so we adapted to be able to remove the tree to remove the nest um, and still remove that entire population. 
I wanted to show you a couple inside pictures of what it looked like when we were opening the nest and eradicating it. When we opened up the nest, there was actually live Asian giant hornets. We had the nest or we had the tree in a cooler um, to kind of keep those Asian giant hornets sedated, keep them from flying around. So we were able to remove them before removing the cones to examine the nest. Um, two things I want to tell you that we found last year by examining the nest and through the trapping program. So look at this bottom picture here. This whole thing is an infographic with all the information what we found from the nest. But I want to point out the bottom comb on the left. That's one of the combs from the Asian giant hornet nest. The white marshmallow looking things are called cap cells. The ones missing that white marshmallow are uncapped cells, meaning an Asian giant hornet has hatched out of it um, or potentially waiting for a pupae and a larvae or a larvae to go inside of it. Sometimes Asian giant hornets reuse these cells as they go from workers to queens, sometimes they don't. But I want to point out there's one cell where you see kind of an orange face. That's actually an Asian giant hornet getting ready to emerge. When they emerge and hatch from the nest, they are complete adult Asian giant hornets. They don't look like small babies. They look like the true one and a half to two inch size Asian giant hornet and they're ready to rock and roll. A couple other things we learned from last year's program is we, we were looking through the contents of the bycatch. So all the other insects that were caught in the Asian giant hornet traps. And they discovered um, the first known detection of Lepotilina japonica in the United States. It's a tiny parasitic wasp that kills spotted wing drosophila. And that SWD is an insect that causes damage to fruit, crop, fruit crops um, and makes the fruit crop harvest a little bit harder for um, in Washington for farmers and residents. So this um, tiny parasitic wasp might be a potential management for SWD moving into the future. The other thing that we were able to do was we were able to sequence some of the genes from the Asian giant hornets. All of the Asian giant hornets caught over in Washington, what we did was we sequenced the CO1 gene. This gene is maternally inherited from the founding queen in Asian giant hornets. So we found that the Asian giant hornets found in Washington had those identical CO1 barcodes, which means it suggests they came from the same introduction. We were also able to analyze one of the specimens from the Nanaimo, British Columbia nest that was eradicated and destroyed. That barcode showed a slight difference in comparison to the hornets we had collected in Washington. So that basically suggests that the Nanaimo introduction was different from the Washington introduction. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to analyze the mainland British, the hornets found over the, on the British Columbia mainland side yet, um, but we hope to soon. All right, so that's kind of a wrap up of last year. What are we gonna be doing this year? Um, well, the outreach and communication side of things, we're still going to be asking people to report. Um, we're still going to be asking people to be citizen scientists, attend virtual events, and possibly in-person events if they resume. So with the citizen scientist trapping, um, details are going to start coming out about that, but it will start in July and run to November. The best resource for you is just to check the website for updates or tell people to check the website for updates um, about, age, about the age citizen scientist trapping program. And then, of course, we, this is just a screenshot of our online reporting form. If you've ever gone online and reported a potential sighting. The other flip side of things is we're going to still be surveying and deploying our own bottle traps. Um, this is the new map here of the survey area we're going to do. So instead of just the two circles in the Blaine Birch Bay area and then again in the Bellingham area, we actually have extended our grins to be larger as well as include that area of Linden. While on the Washington side of things, no Asian giant hornets have been detected that far east, there was a couple detections on the British Columbia side. So we wanna make sure we're getting all of that distance and we're trapping for as much as we potentially can. The last thing I wanna to mention to you before I get started into the common imposters is what to do if, stung, if you're stung by an Asian giant hornet. Um, Asian giant hornets in their native range typically kill 10 to 20 people each year due to the effects of this sting. However, there has been years where up to 40 people um, have that it became casualties. So if you're stung once, apply ice, take an antihistamine. If in pain, take aspirin, but then clean that sting site. Um, 
They're capable of delivering more venom if stung than we're used to of our native insects, and that venom will actually damage the skin surrounding the sting site. If people are allergic, they may be having an anaphylactic reaction, so epinephrine and call 911. The part where it becomes serious is if you're stung multiple times, and since they're hornets, they're capable of doing so. Applying ice, taking antihistamine if you're in pain, take aspirin, and then seek a healthcare provider promptly. If you're allergic, this reaction might become severe, so then epinephrine and call 911. Um, there's also on our, if you get on YouTube and you type in WSDA, go to the WSDA's YouTube page, there is an outdoor farm worker and safety video. It's about five minutes long if anybody's interested in watching that or sharing it with um, their workspace. All right, last part here for you. Um, I'm going to go over some size comparisons, side-by-sides, differences between some insects that commonly get reported or mistaken for Asian giant hornet. Here's just a side-by-side -side slideshow for you of an Asian giant hornet and one of our honeybees. So just like the honeybees, we want to keep our bumblebees around small, black, yellow, and fuzzy. Sometimes they tend to be more black, but if they're fuzzy, it's not going to be an Asian giant hornet. Bald-faced hornets are found throughout most of North America pretty actually common in the southeastern United States, but we do have them here. They're about three or half to inch to three quarters in length and usually slightly smaller than yellow jackets. Pretty much all black with white markings is how you're going to identify them. Great golden digger wasps found throughout pretty much all of North America, about an inch long. It has this nice wasp waist you can see here, and it does have a dark brown to black body, kind of like the Asian giant hornet, but it's covered in all of these yellow golden hairs distinguishing it as well as it has orange legs, unlike the Asian giant hornet. The best feature to tell it apart for me is, um, sorry, my computer froze, is that abdomen. Um, it has that black tip to the orange red towards the front, so it doesn't have that banding like Asian giant hornet. Cicada killers can get confused because they can get up to two inches long. They're primarily found in the Western United States um, and their thorax, that middle part tends to be more red comparison to the black brown like the Asian giant hornet. You can't see in this picture, but cicada killers have round eyes. Asian giant hornets don't. Um, their striping patterns are also different. The most distinguishing feature for me is the size proportion of the head. If you look at cicada killers in comparison to Asian giant hornets. Horntail wasps, they can look a little scary, but they're actually a very beneficial and native insect to Washington. That thing at the end looks like a very large stinger, but it's not. This is actually how they get their nickname wood wasp because that's an egg laying tube they use to lay their eggs in wood. Yellow jackets are found throughout the US again. They're usually about in half an inch long, the workers. However, early or later in the season, you might be seeing a little bit larger than normal yellow jackets because they're queens. They're pretty much always brightly marked with yellow or orange and black. I have two more for you. Um, elm sawflies are found throughout most of North America, usually about a three quarters to an inch long. Um, they're missing that wasp waist, kind of like the hornet has. Um, instead, that there's that white spot on their abdomen, uh, or sorry, their white spot on their thorax. Fun fact, this is the largest sawfly on the continent. Last one for you, our paper wasps, pretty much found throughout all of North America. They'll get about three quarters of an inch long, a lot smaller than Asian giant hornet. Um, you can separate these from the other hornets because they have that very distinct defined wasp waist. However, if you're not sure if it's an Asian giant hornet or anyone isn't, the best thing to do is report it. Um, you report that to the Washington State Department of Agriculture with details of what you saw. So where you saw it, when you saw it, anything you noticed it was doing. Was it sitting on a tree? Was it eating fruit? Was it digging in the ground? If you can safely snap a photo, that's even better. It's really hard to confirm or deny it's an Asian giant hornet without being able to see it. Um, so if being able to see it, if the specimen happens to be dead, go ahead and collect it in case the Washington State Department of Agriculture, we want to test it later. There's three different ways you can report. You can go online to the website agr.wa.gov slash hornets. You can shoot an email to hornets at agr.wa.gov and you can call our hotline 1-800-443-6684. Um, I just included an email if anyone's listening from Oregon and they want to report their sightings, the email's on this page as well. All right, so that's kind of it for me, but 
I'm outreach. So I want to tell you another way you can stay informed um, with keeping up with the Asian Giant Hornet Response Project. Um, we create what we call these stakeholder updates. Um, they're PDFs that come to your email typically monthly. Sometimes if it's a little busy, they come more. But they just provide project updates from the WSDA, USDA, and even British Columbia um, with different things that are going on and different findings as the project progresses. You actually can sign up to receive these emails automatically if you're interested. And I'm just going to quickly show you how. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go online, get on your phone or get on the computer and type in agr.wa.gov slash hornets, my favorite web page to tell you to go to all day long. Anyway, once you're on that website, you'll see the screen that looks like this. And then you're just going to scroll down from that home page. And you're going to scroll down until you see this section that says stay informed. It has a couple different links in it, but you're going to want to click the top one that says click this link to join WSDA's program listserv. And then it's going to take you to a screen that looks like this next one. You're going to need to type in your name, at least your email address, so you can get the emails, right? And then leave the subscription type as regular. And then under topics, make sure you have Asian Giant Hornet selected, and then click subscribe. Um, you can also sign up to receive stakeholder updates about Apple Maggot and Gypsy Moth if you're interested. The last thing I can do to keep you connected is if we do run and moderate a Facebook group. I get a lot of awesome feedback. People like it. They like to connect with others and get a lot of updates from the WSDA. It's facebook.com slash groups slash hornets. We did create a end of year 2020 video, kind of a look behind the scenes where you got to meet different people from the departments working on the Asian Giant Hornet project. That video is available for you on YouTube. It's about 25 minutes long. Just get on YouTube, type in WSDA. It'll take you to the WSDA channel. And then we have an Asian Giant Hornet sub channel that has about 21 videos on it for you to watch, um, including the response video I'm telling you about, as long as past, um, past media events. Okay, that's it for me. My email is there at the bottom. Again, Cassie Chihorse. I work with Asian Giant Hornets as the Outreach and Education Specialist. And I will be pausing now for any questions. Awesome. Thanks, Cassie. Real quick, and we can answer questions simultaneously. I am going to show people that are waiting for their pesticide credits the code word. And we're going to be sharing screens and doing things. There we go. So your code word is queen. If you are hoping to get pesticide recertification credits, please type the word queen into the chat and I will leave this up for a couple of minutes too. And if there's anybody on the phone, you can either email me the word queen or see if you've got a friend that's on the webinar on their computer and they can type in the word queen. Um, but that is the code word for today. So I'm gonna leave that up there just for a little bit so we can make sure everybody gets it in. And we have a lot of really great questions, Cassie. So I'm gonna kind of organize those two while we're waiting. The first one is, and I feel like you probably have fielded this one before. I know I've kind of heard things about it, but I don't know the answer either. Um, Honey bees aren't native. What is known about the impacts of Asian giant hornet on native social I'm gonna not say this word right, Hymenoptera species. <laughs> you get it, you got it. Um, so the impacts of the other native species in Asian giant hornet is actually unknown. You know, this is the first time Asian giant hornet has been introduced over here. Um, so we're not quite sure how it's gonna interact with, uh, with our other native species. Um, they are an apex predator, so they have the potential to feed on a plethora of insects of their choice. Um, there's not much out there that will actually harm it, so, um, we're just going to need to eradicate it before we have to find those impacts out, right? <laughs> Ooh, we have some people saying they're members of the Facebook group and that they love it. So there you go, folks. We did not plant those people, by the way. Those are regular people that said that. Um, and then Cassie, I had a question about commitments. So let's say somebody on the webinar today is interested in doing and participating in the trapping in collaboration with WSDA for this coming summer what kind of commitment are they looking at? Okay, so any help is great. If you can only do it one week, two weeks, that's awesome. 
However, the program will start in July and it will run through November. So it's 21, 22 weeks. Um, you can round it out in there. Um, you'll be required to get the same um, types of materials as last year. So a plastic clear liter bottle, rice cooking wine and orange juice for the bait. We will be offering um, an alternative to that type of bait. Um, so stay tuned on our webpage for the alternative. Um, but basically you're just gonna have your trap. You're gonna hang it up and check it each week. Um, last year, we asked people to return the samples. This year, we won't. So it'll just be you hanging up your trap, replacing the bait each week, and looking through your insects to see if there is an Asian giant hornet. Thank you. And then we had a question. Are Asian giant hornets like honey and like Western honeybees and that they don't fly at night? Um, Asian giant hornets will be out foraging throughout, you know, the daytime, the nighttime, um, it typically, you know, as it gets colder, um, sometimes, you know, the temperatures drop at night, there'll be more of them in the nest, but they can definitely be out flying around day or night. And then on that same subject, what other species are you finding in the traps? Have you found any other invasive species while looking for Asian giant hornet? Yep, so there's, I mean, there's other hornets native, like there's other hornets that were found in the traps like bald faced hornets um, and yellow jackets. Um, but our results basically concluded that it didn't harm any potential populations of any insect, um, you know, other than what we're trying to get rid of Asian giant hornet. Um, but honeybees were not attracted to the traps. Um, there was a couple moths and stuff in the traps and basically they're still sorting through um, a couple other citizen scientist traps before they release that data and complete to the public. But sign up for those stakeholder updates because there is releases that come out as scientists find things. Thank you. And then this one is about kind of their life cycle. Do we happen to know whether or not any drones that do happen to overwinter, if they will mate with the springtime virgin queens? Um, I don't believe that I know the answer to that because all of the research I've read says that they die in the winter. That's easy enough. And then do we not have European hornet here? I don't actually know that. We we do not. Um, there was a potential report, I believe one, maybe one report in Oregon, but they're mostly Southwest. They're mostly in the Eastern part of the United States. We do want to keep that Vespa crab bro from here, um, but it has not been confirmed to be reported in Washington yet. We want to keep it out. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. And then last chance, everybody, if you're looking for pesticide free certification credits, please type in the word queen. I'm going to take the slideshow down here in just a second. And then I'm thinking of this just because Justin and I came from uh, a meeting right before this that was talking about uh, naming conventions and how depending on the naming convention, like for invasive species for the United States, typically we name them based on where they came from, like Asian giant hornet, Japanese knotweed. And there can sometimes be a negative connotation to naming a species and then calling them invaders and like saying that we're going to destroy them and all that sort of linguistic challenges that come along with something like that. So all of this to say, do you know how or why Asian giant hornet got that name in America? And do you know what they're called in their native home ranges? Um, well, Asian giant hornet, you know, it's, it's, it's their name. Um, Asian hornet is, you know, actually a different species than Asian giant hornet. So if you are Googling, that might be a little bit confusing, but it's, it's really Asian giant hornet. Um, Basically how they came here is really under um, spec speculation. We didn't exactly see a hornet come over here, so we can't say exactly how they got here. Um, but we know that imports are huge and exports are huge around here. So typically, I guess I shouldn't say typically, there is the idea going around that an Asian giant hornet might've been a queen overwintering. Um, so maybe she was tucked away in somewhere sheltered as the freight or cargo came over. Um, so it might not have been easy to see a hornet like up out and flying around. And then just to confirm, as far as you are aware, Asian giant hornets have not been found anywhere else in the United States, except for in that small localized area of Washington. Correct. Perfect. And then are we, I guess, what things are we doing as we're working with British Columbia? Like, do you guys tell them when you find a nest and like tell them like, oh, these traps work really well, use this bait? Like, is there a collaboration happening across so the border? We have, um... Bi-weekly bi -weekly meetings, um, actually, where British Columbia does, does pop in and chime on. Um, we talk about the different types of baits and lures we're trying out. We share um, where we're going to be trapping is um, in the trap, the area, the trap areas locations. Um, 
every time those stakeholder updates, updates get sent out, that's another chance to be like, hey, do you have anything else you want people to know? We share new finds that they have in British Columbia um, through those stakeholder updates with Washington residents as well as vice versa. Um, an example last year, during that fall time, remember I said Asian giant hornets might want some more protein. They actually switched over to trying some protein-based traps with some bacon and some cat food. Um, they seemed to not be very successful with that, so then they went back to using the rice cooking wine and orange juice like we did. But that's just an example of collaboration and working together. Perfect. Thank you. Sorry, we're getting a couple of repeats. I'm just going through these. I think we might be all caught up. Let me double check before I move on. So this is your last chance. If you have a question for Cassie, drop it in the chat or the question and answer pane. <laughs> I almost do Cassie, but I'm not gonna say. <laughs> I guess one question that came up, it wasn't this week, it was in a different meeting that I was in. Somebody was talking about since the European honeybees haven't evolved with Asian giant hornet, would there be a benefit to if you wanted to be a honey, what is it called, apiarist, to have to use the bees that come from Asia that have evolved with Asian giant hornets and then import them here, or would that cause more good than or more harm than good? Oh, you're muted. There you go. <laughs> okay, so it would be really bad to bring Japanese honeybees over here. Um, any beekeeper will tell you that mites are a bad thing with your bees. Um, they just kind of prey on the bees, eat the bees, make the colonies really, really sick. And sometimes the only way to get rid of mites, um, if you're not able to prevent mites from happening, is to just lose your entire honeybee hive. Um, so they have a mite over there with their Japanese honeybees that we don't have here called tropolalaps. And it's kind of like the hulk of mites. Um, it makes our mites look small and very pest, like just no, like no problem. So we don't want those mites coming over here. Um, they would really potentially harm our honeybees and our honey production and then, you know, further harm agriculture. So we don't want to import those bees over here. Thank you. I did not know the answer to that question, but I assumed it was something that was not good. <laughs> And then we have kind of a follow-up to that. What specifically makes honeybee hives more vulnerable or I guess appealing um, to Asian giant hornets than other colonies like paper wasps, et cetera? Well, I mean, managed honeybee hives are very, you know, they're very large. Um, as, a, as a beekeeper, as someone, you know, they're easy to get to because they're in the box or in the apiary where it's being kept and there's a lot at once. So as an Asian giant hornet, it's easier to go after, you know, prey all in one spot, then go off and pick it off in many different places. They do that as well, but um, it's just kind of an easy source for them to get to. Thank you. And then is there any reason or indication why the Asian giant hornet nest that was found in Washington was in a tree instead of in the ground like they've always been documented being? Um, that, the answer to that is no, other than, you know, it's their first time here outside of their native range. Um, the one in Nanaimo was in the forest ground. Um, we suspect that moving forward this year, we will eradicate potentially any nests that are present. So I guess we'll just stay tuned to see if those tend to be in the ground as well. Um, the speculation just says it was probably an easy spot for the queen to start her nest. So that's just kind of maybe where she ended up. Perfect, thank you. And then does, um, I mean, USDA, WSDA, do any of the agencies involved in eradicating this have an indication or idea of how many more nests may be left? Um, there, I can't give you an exact number. Um, if you can kind of think back to that map, we did have Asian giant hornets kind of found all around the area. Um, earlier in the summer, Asian giant hornets were being found in the area of Birch Bay. Um, and then as summer kind of got closer to the middle towards the end, those drop-offs of or finding those Asian giant hornets just kind of dropped off. Um, that's eight kilometers further than the nest that was found in Blaine. So we do believe that there was present a possible another Asian giant hornet population over there, um, as well as maybe towards the Custer area as well. So um, it's possible that there might be more populations out there of Asian giant hornet. And then I can answer this one. Yes, this webinar is being recorded. We will be planning on sharing the link later. So if you wanted to forward this to anybody or share it with any of your colleagues, that will definitely be available uh, hopefully this afternoon. And then um, another question is, are Asian giant hornet being eradicated in Asia as well? 
Um, they are not. They, they do trap for Asian giant hornets. Beekeepers try to keep them out of their traps. Um, but the culture there is just a little different. So um, it is kind of a delicacy. They do eat them and there's a plethora of Asian giant hornets. So it's just different over there. Is the Pacific Northwest region a good habitat for Asian giant hornets? Asian giant hornets like subtropic to moderate temperatures based off that, you know, our climatic factors are there and they're present. Um, they typically don't really like marshy grounds. They like hills and forests or um, areas that's, you know, not gonna be bogged down with water. So there is a lot of area in the Pacific Northwest that would be um, good habitat for them, potentially. Thank you. And I think that is all the questions. So I'll give it another minute just in case anybody has any further questions. But again, everything that Cassie's reviewed today, everything that we've talked about, including a lot of that great contact information on her slides is recorded and it will be available later. Uh, if you have been with us the whole time and you've had access to the chat, I know Justin's been dropping in a bunch of really great links. Maybe click on some of those and kind of save them to look at a little bit later. There's information in there of how we found it, what has been done about it, what you can do if you're interested in trapping. There's even some information about some of the species that were found in those traps. Um, so I would really encourage you to look at those if this is something that you're interested in or feel like you uh, would want to share with other people that you work with. And definitely join the listservs and the Facebook groups and all the other really great resources that Cassie has talked about today. I know that, um, that as also a recipient of those listservs, WSDA is really great at being transparent and giving out a lot of information that's timely um, just to kind of keep everybody updated with what's going on. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Any more questions? I'm going to call it. I'll give it just another few seconds, but haha, I knew we'd get another one in. If the Asian giant hornet is not being eradicated in Asia, how are we going to keep them out of our area? But I think it's important to dis to make the distinction and then before uh, we go farther is that they're not, Asia is their native home range. So it would be the equivalent of us having like a paper wasp here that we would be, then be going and eradicating, right? Like this is a normal evolved species that they have in parts of Asia. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Justin isn't hopping on this question. Um, <laughs> Justin, like, we're calling you out. With any import and export um, at the ports, they do, they go through a lot of um, screenings. They go through a lot of checks um, to make sure that any invasive species or any invasive pest or something we don't want over here is coming here. Um, that's kind of just goes for all of the borders. Um, there's actually, it's actually against the law to transport any live hornets. So just, just don't do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the borders do have inspections and stuff to keep invasive species from um, moving over and crossing over. Kind of like just with our gypsy moth um, that we work on keeping out of Washington state as well. Thank you, Cassie. Okay, I'm gonna give it just another few seconds. I'm not seeing any more questions. I did see a comment and maybe you can confirm, I don't actually know this. US borders are closed to bringing in honeybees. Um, and the reason for that is there, we want to prevent any mites or bee viruses or other potential diseases from spreading to the honeybees that we have here in Washington. Yeah, I didn't know that. I learned that today. You have to have very specific permits to move honeybees around. Um, for example, sometimes in areas of Alaska where they have really harsh winters, um, they will get special permits and move special bees um, up there to have bees to pollinate some of their fruits and stuff like that. So. That's another reason we don't want Asian giant hornet. We don't want to spread it to other places. Cool, I'll learn something today. Oh, looks like we got one more sneaking in. Okay, I believe this will be our last question. Um, do Asian giant hornets pose a danger with the honeybee production in Washington state? And I feel like, yes, we've kind of touched on that. And would you mind going into the reasoning behind why there's such a risk? So um, Asian giant hornets can decimate an entire honeybee hive. So if you're losing an entire hive of honeybees, um, you're losing that honey production. Um, so it's kind of just directly losing honeybees, you're going to directly lose honey. Um, another thing too is they, um, it's, it would be the same impact on agriculture, but Asian giant hornets also have large mandibles and they like fruits and sugars. So they can eat on overripe and chewed fruits. Um, so that could be another way they can affect agriculture as well. And for a frame of reference, so when we're talking like they can decimate a honeybee, 
population like? Is that an entire colony of 800 strong Asian giant hornets decimated or is it a few individuals in a matter of minutes can get rid of a colony? I don't think I threw this number out during my presentation. In their native range, on average, one to 20 Asian giant hornets can decimate, you know, you know, kill an entire honeybee hive on average of one to six hours usually takes about 90 minutes. So in about 90 minutes, that entire um, honeybee colony, that entire hive is deceased. I remember it being something kind of crazy from one of your other presentations. So I'm glad you clarified. I remember being surprised. All right, folks, that is the presentation. So thank you so much. Again, this is the final day of the Invasive Species Awareness Week. We're so glad that you were able to join us for the last and final day closing with Asian Giant Hornet. Um, if you did not know, the, the code word is QUEEN. This is your very last chance to type it into the chat before I send a follow-up email to all of you um, to make sure that we get you those pesticide recertification credits. Again, feel free to copy down any of the links that Justin has put in the chat. And then this webinar is recorded and it has all of Cassie's wonderful information and uh, website links and different things that you can do if you want to be a part of this community and help out uh, WSDA later this summer. So thank you so much, Cassie, for coming and speaking with all of us today and lending your expertise. I really appreciate it. And it's always good to come and hear you talk. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Happy Friday.